translates as kane who transforms the world and when you think about agriculture and turning something in turning it you know growth from a field you know starting with essentially nothing or the just the seeds or the tubers of plants and in the end having something emerge on the landscape and that's what kane aloli kahonua's um, role is in this chant um, the chant is obviously one that's used not only for agriculture but in times of agricultural duress because it talks about the famine times, about drought times. There are images in there about earth drying up and cracking and, uh, and so and about people retreating into the wawakua in order to gain their sustenance and so the idea of people moving into the realm of the gods in order to survive um, points to the relationship of the gods of the land to ancient Hawaiians and how important it was to make sure that you're in balance with these kinds of things. So Kane Aololi Kahonua uh, mentions a few uh, famine crops. They talk about eating hapu'u, you know, the starchy core of hapu'u, or going up into the lower forest zone and finding wild kalo growing between Kanawao, which is the native sertandra, which grows in, in moist gulches. So this points also to the intimacy that Hawaiians had in ancient times, not only in their agricultural fields, but in the forests above them, and how from the forests comes life. And of course, water flowing down from the forested watersheds is, is one of those kinds of um, relationships. So it's not necessarily a supernatural relationship that we're talking about. It's a very empirical recognition of where water comes from. When Kane and Lono are, are evoked, uh, the prayer says, revivify the land, ho'o la'i ka'aina, apoho ka'ai, that is, until there's so much food, um, it's, it's almost wasteful, you know. Um, Aulu kupu kupu, that is, growing profusely, aulu lao po'o'ole, which means, um, which is, it's a very obscure term, po'o'ole is headless, and uh, the po'o, is the la is the terminal shoot, and so when you're po'o'ole, does that mean that the terminal shoot is gone? No, it means that there's so many shoots going that you can't find the terminal shoot. So, um, and so that means pro very profuse uh, growth. Aoka nui ioka ai until there is so much edible vegetable matter. Um, that's what that that's what that uh, chant describes. So it's a chant of growth. It's a ho'o laoka'aina, it's bringing health and life to the land. And that's what kane o loli kahonua is. And I thought it was an appropriate chant for an ethnobotany course. Well, I think one of the, one of the biggest symptoms of, of societal ills of our times is the disconnect that we have. 
disconnect from other people, whether they're people suffering in other parts of the world, or even people suffering in other communities than our own. And also, this is related to the disconnect that we have between ourselves and our, that which gives us life. So you turn on the tap and water comes out and you presume that water is always going to be coming out of your tap. Or you go to the store and you get food and you don't think about where that food is grown and how much effort goes into, into raising that. The power of the Hawaiian Renaissance is a reconnect of, of people to, to ancient values. And in the case of Hawaii, those values included a very close relationship with the land and with all of the processes that result in healthy communities. So um, the power of Oli is to point out how ancient that relationship is and how we shouldn't ignore it. Just because we live in more modern times, the relationship that we have to the earth exists. It's just hidden by layers of, of intermediaries, some of which are thousands of miles away these days. But when you think about those societies that have the most sustainable lives. Those are the ones that have the connections to that which sustains them closest to them so that they can take care of them. Part of the power of Oli is that is the difference between reading lines of Shakespeare and having someone give them with full heart. Um, just as in a relationship with another person, you read into how they feel about you by how ex you know exactly how much they put into what they say to you when they say it how they say it and so by the same token the relationship of Hawaiians to the gods that sustain them is not uh, a casual thing nor something that you do without serious intent so in Oli training you learn about the significance of what you're presenting and you learn that unless you're practicing it um, when it's come time, when it comes time to present this, you present it earnestly, correctly, and completely. So, and uh, the whole Maika Ike is a real simple oli. It's one of the first ones many people learn. Right. And so it's good because it's a consolidating kind of thing, right? Um, if you know it, you know you can stand up and and present it. And you know that there are likely other people who will do the same. Right. And, and so it's not so embarrassing. And that's right? exactly the phenomenon that you see happen. Um, to, to do it. Uh, and yet, the, it was Edith Kanaka Ole, I believe, who composed that thing. And uh, even though she was asked to make it as non, what's the word, non-spiritual as, as possible, so that it wouldn't run into any kind of like religion in school type of thing. Okay. Um, she was able to draw using simple words the kinds of relationships that we're talking about. Um, confer knowledge from above, you know, and so that's you can you can work anything you want into that. Yeah, that's right. And then onamea huna no eao, the skillful secret knowledge. And so that uh, and huna is not when you say secret it could be like hidden it could be unrevealed and yet revealed when the time is right yeah and the same is true when you're talking with talking about traditional ancient wisdom you know it, information is passed to students and the teacher gauges what they're ready for and then later on they're ready for more to be revealed and so and so she talks about how this information is held in the oral traditions when it says ona mele. So, in one very simple four or five line chant, she captures all kinds of, of values that are inherent in the passing of traditional Hawaiian knowledge. <laughs>